In a solution, our solutes can be classified as either strong electrolytes, weak electrolytes, or non-electrolytes. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to distinguish from these three different types of electrolytes. Before we get started, I do want to point out that this designation, strong, weak, and non-electrolyte, this only applies to, sol to solutes that are in an aqueous solution. Remember, the aqueous solution just refers to solutes that have been dissolved in water. So this is going to be our solutes that have been dissolved in a solution where water is the solvent. Let's get started first with the strong electrolyte. A strong electrolyte is one that completely dissociates in solution. Or we could be even more specific and say that it completely dissociates when we put it in water. I wanna make sure that you understand the difference between dissociating and dissolving because all of these solutes dissolve, they just don't all dissociate. So down here, we're gonna draw a picture in this beaker. We're gonna draw a picture of a strong electrolyte. And first, I'm gonna fill this beaker up with some water. And once I get some water in my beaker, we're going to pick a strong electrolyte. Sodium chloride is a strong electrolyte. So here I have some NaCl and it's just in the solid state. So you can imagine what that might look like. That's just like table salt. And we're gonna be sprinkling it into this beaker full of water. Now, as the sodium chloride goes down into the beaker, it is going to dissolve, meaning that it is going to mix with the beaker of water and it's gonna form a solution. In addition to dissolving, the sodium chloride is going to dissociate. Dissociation means that the sodium chloride um, compound is going to separate. So the cations are going to separate completely from the anions. And it's not going to be NaCl anymore. It's just going to be sodium ions and chloride ions completely separated from each other. So we have in this strong electrolyte, we have 100% dissociation. And if we wanted to write this out in terms of a chemical equation, we could say what we just what we just drew there, sodium chloride as a solid. And when we put it into water, we end up with sodium ions. And since they are now in water, we're going to say that they are aqueous because they're in water. And we also have chloride ions also aqueous in water. And this reaction that we just wrote out is just showing how the sodium chloride is dissociating or falling apart once it gets put into water. Sometimes you might see somebody would write water underneath the reaction arrow. Writing it underneath the reaction arrow means that the water is an essential component of this process, but it's not a reactant. It's not going, uh, undergoing any sort of chemical change. So let's talk next about the weak electrolytes. A weak electrolyte is one that partially dissociates. And let's draw a picture of what that might look like. So let's get another beaker and we'll put some more water in it. And the example of weak electrolyte that I'm going to use is vinegar. The formula for the component of vinegar is CH3COOH, and it is a liquid. And so when we sprinkle this into solution, what we see is that some of these molecules undergo dissociation, and when they dissociate, they dissociate to form the acetate ion, CH3COO-, and a hydrogen ion, H+. But we also see that some of these molecules do not dissociate. They stay completely intact. So this is what we describe as a weak electrolyte because it's undergoing partial dissociation. The amount or the extent to which these molecules dissociate is a unique characteristic of the actual molecule itself, and it's something that we talk about later on in the year. We could write a chemical equation for this process as well, CH3COOH. In this partial dissociation situation, the way that we communicate that this is undergoing partial dissociation is that we just use an entirely different type of reaction arrow. Actually, I need to make a little bit of room because I forgot to put the liquid here. 
So this type of reaction arrow, which is like a half of an arrow going to the right and a half of an arrow going to the left, this is the arrow that we use when we are dealing with a weak electrolyte. And again, this, this particular type of arrow is just simply used to communicate that we have a weak electrolyte and it's only undergoing partial dissociation. And so that's what that equation would look like. Now in the last situation, we have a non-electrolyte. And a non-electrolyte is one that does not dissociate at all. So this undergoes no dissociation. It does not mean that it doesn't dissolve. It just doesn't dissociate. So we're going to, over here, we're going to do one more beaker. This is going to be a beaker of a non-electrolyte. We'll put some water in it. And in this beaker, the non-electrolyte that we're going to be using is the sugar molecule, which is C6H12O6. And you can imagine some solid white sugar, and you know that if you sprinkle sugar into water, it is going to dissolve. So it's going to mix in there, but that sugar does not dissociate. The molecule stays completely intact. So you see no ions falling apart. We just have these sugar molecules that are now just mixed with water. And the way that we would communicate that in terms of a balanced equation, so we would just write C6H12O6 in the solid state. We do use the forward arrow again, because over here on the other side, C6H12O6, we're going to write aqueous. And if we wanted to put water under the arrow, we can do that as well. So um, as I said in this video, the purpose was to show you how to distinguish between strong, weak, and non-electrolytes. There are really two different ways that I've shown you in this video. One, you can look at a picture of what's actually happening. If you see the substance turning completely into ions, then you know that you have a strong electrolyte. And if you see the substance not turning into ions at all, then you know that you have a non-electrolyte. And when you have something in the middle, it's a weak electrolyte. Another way that you can distinguish them from each other is by looking at a chemical equation to show the process of the electrolyte dissolving in water. If you see that the electrolyte is being converted into ions using a forward arrow, a normal standard forward arrow, you know that it's a strong electrolyte. If you see that it's being turned into ions and we're using this back and forth arrow, then that means that we're dealing with a weak electrolyte. And if you see that it is not turning into an ion at all, then that's how you know that it's a non-electrolyte.